Hey guys, so this video is about a community called Senex and its owner Husky. We previously not only cracked his spoofer but also generally all of his products and dumped everything. This video is nothing special as his products are free to use but I wanted to record it anyways to show how to hypothetically bypass programs every useful um, for malware and this. Today I will not speak about VM Protect itself because I respect the copyright. <clears throat> yeah, so I don't get termed. I'm doing this again after some days, so I might fuck something up. Anyways, let's get started. We're we will look on a um, program called Senex Rocket League Bot. Um, I realized that they did not really implement VM Protect, so we don't need to worry anyways here. Um. For this video, le let's try to do it without um, bypassing anything. I will just load it right here. Yep. And we already are at the original entry point. So they did not use VM Protect correctly. Anyways, as I told in the last video, we can just scroll up, see some spacing here. That's how I usually detect where the main call is. And it's right here. So this is our int main. And if we click here and just set here breakpoint and run the program, we can now look for strings. This is very useful for reverse engineering and getting more information about the program. For example, it uses an authentication library called KeyArt right here, which is not very hard to bypass actually. And if we look down, we see this pattern right here. Now what this does is this is just anti-debugging by checking for DLLs loaded in memory called x64 debug and just some others. And it just causes some blue screens if you try to crack it with the task kill SV host right here. Now there are some ways people will make you blue screen, but I can tell you it is either task kill or if we look into the symbols and go to NTDLL and search for hard, it will tell you this NT race hard error. Now if you break this to right here by pressing F2, you will break before it calls you the blue screen. So that's very useful. I just found it out. So now the next thing we're gonna do is we want to bypass the protection. Now what I do already know is that this protection all runs in a single thread so what we can do right here is just use the command line it is pretty fast we use bp for breakpoint and then create thread right here i will also do some other uh, breakpoints for example breakpoint create file a or if they remove something we can use breakpoint remove and we can also just breakpoint some other stuff, but that's for today. Now I will just keep running this. I will remove the breakpoint right here. And we see that a thread creates. Now we can look into the internet by uh, opening browser and just, oh, sorry, my, my VM is very slow. Just searching uh, for create thread Windows API, for example. And then we just take the, the first link right here and scroll down a bit and we see how the syntax is working. So we get some attributes, the stack size and the start address. Now what we can do with this is look on the right right here. We want to see what is being executed in this thread. So for example, in our cases, the register R8 and the R9 register is very important for us. This is basically, I, I, I'm not sure, it's just right here, basically the, the thread stuff. But if we look on this address, right click and choose the second option, we see what is being executed in this thread. Now I'm, I know from trying it before that this call is basically his protection. So what we can do right here is just make the thread do nothing. Now we can just knob this out or we can just return with a zero like nothing happened. Now we see this push RBX. What we can do right here, we see this pop RBX before the return. 
Now we can just patch it right here to pop RBX, RBX, keep size, and then OK. And then we just insert a return right here. Now in this case, as I tested before, the protection is completely not working anymore, not raising any um, blue screens or anything else. Now we successfully bypass this. We can now, for example, just create a new patch file. And that's all. Now we go back and just keep running. We see that it just closes and it creates another thread. Now let's try if we can do the same again. Okay, it just runs the same stuff again. And again. And now we see here is nothing. So let's take a look in the R8 register. And if we scroll down a bit, this is actually the keyout thread. Why can I tell this? Now I used to crack keyout for some times already. Um, I'm not um, exactly showing how you can bypass keyout because this is illegal on YouTube and generally I don't want this. But what we can do just for this program and for malware analysts, for example, we can just make this thread loop through a sleep right here. So we can just copy this address right here and just go up and on the first call we would just jump to the sleep and after the sleep we can just right here jump to the sleep again so this will create an endless loop now we can just search for intermodule calls and what we're gonna search for is input because it will ask us for input so we just search for C in and we can breakpoint this all and what we're gonna do is just execute the code again now I know that it creates some threads again so we can just uh, just keep this running it will look like this and now we break somewhere on a C in so on a character in on an input and we see the first input is about the login or register or whatever. What we can do is just remove this breakpoint because it's not very useful for us and just keep running. We will select the first option and we hit one again. So this is the actual username input right here. All right. So this is that it displays this right here on the console. And this right here waits for an input. That's basically it. So we can remove this breakpoint and set breakpoint after this input and just run. And we will enter something and as you can see we break again right here. So now we don't need to focus on this because this is just straight encryption. I can show you by if we just breakpoint on this LEA instruction right here and press F4 to run it there and just step over it. We see in the register RDX let's see if something uh, rdx rdx okay nothing here yet then it is just probably this so here it just calls the uh, password and here it will be the input so let's do the same again breakpoint after the input and we will be here all right now we see this which is probably some um some um, authentication so we will just uh, continue running over this okay so this was our out uh, send I'm just calling like this and we jump already over the exit which is pretty nice and let's see what are these jumps doing. All right. So the first jump is maybe already giving us the right position for um, for this stuff. Let's check the other. It says invalid. And here it says invalid two. So what we can do is just we uh, jump right here. And let's continue going over this all.
okay so what we see here it just didn't jump over the exit for some some reason so something is wrong there what we can do is just patch this to a jump again now it's called system so it clears the console now it says username all right perfect and we're literally in and here it called sleep perfect now let's see if we maybe have something like a another uh, check but it doesn't seem to also by analyzing the program it seems that it doesn't even use any drivers as far as I remember yep yeah, it doesn't even KD mapper no, okay perfect so it seems it doesn't even use anything related to drivers that's pretty nice now we can just export this patches and let's run it and see if it already works hopefully okay it still says invalid username but it says waiting for rocket league so the invalid username it's probably somewhere here all right so this could be something like here but anyways it says waiting for rocket league so this is very good well i don't have rocket league installed but i am going to release all this stuff from senex on my discord um so feel free to check it out and i hope this video was helping you um and i'm not promoting here how to bypass some protection or whatever i'm just telling you how you could use this for malware analysts and i'm telling this because i don't want to get termed again so i hope this video helped you and yeah see you in the next video